Hey, what's up guys, Kudokun here. Today we're going to get our chance to talk about Pokemon Legends RCS, a game that I have been very, very excited for over this past year or so. I'd love to tell you my thoughts on the game. If there's anything left to say, <laughs> this is one of the most spoiled Pokemon games that I have seen in a long time. Probably even most spoiled Nintendo game that I've seen outside of like a Super Smash Bros. game. It is unbelievable the amount of spoilers that have already been posted about this game. So... I will do my absolute best to not contribute to that, and to make this as spoiler-free as humanly possible. Do know that I will have to talk about some mechanics a little bit later on in the game, but I will try not to spoil this with images of any Pokémon or uh, anything major in the story. Going into this game, it's easy to say that I had some expectations. I saw everything that they were offering us in trailers, and I had a small wish list of things that I wanted to see out of this game. I wanted to see some kind of switch up in the way that Pokemon catching and battling both worked. I wanted to see the open world actually open up a little bit so that I could go on mindless adventures out in the field, completely ignoring the main story and just having a couple of hours of a good time before I decided to hop into anything serious. And on that vein, I wanted to see some actual side content that I could do that wasn't just going to gyms, collecting badges, rocking down a route, and collecting more badges. So, I guess the question is, did Game Freak deliver? It's a little bit of a complicated question to answer. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, the first thing we have to talk about is the open world. And I'm a little bit peeved about the way that they pitch this to us because it's not necessarily an open world it's actually a lot more like levels of a game or areas of a game so the way it works is you have one hub town that you spend most of the game in if you play dragon age 2 it's a lot like the main city in that game. I know that's not the best image for a lot of people to conjure up right now, but that is essentially what it is. You have one town that you'll be spending the majority of the game in, and then every time you leave that town, you can teleport to a different region of the map. Um, That's not really what an open world is to me. I'm not saying it's a deal breaker necessarily. Uh, it is still a huge, vast open area that you can explore, and exploration is a huge part of the game. There are lots of little collectibles for you to go around and collect, and there's a lot of different things for you to see. It's just not what I would consider an open world. So they get kind of a half point for that one. It is fun to walk around and see what you can discover and look for all the little collectibles and Easter eggs that they've hidden everywhere, but it's just not really what they promised. I know one thing that a lot of people have been worried about is the new catching Pokemon system. It looks a little bit more casual than what we're already used to. Now, I uh, obviously have a few qualms about the way the Pokemon community approaches any kind of new content added to a game. I even have this huge uh, video on my channel, which is a joke video that's like the top 10 Pokemon games based on innovation. And the joke of the video is that no Pokemon game made the list because... Pokemon games don't innovate very often, and Pokemon fans get very upset when too many innovations are made. But, rest assured, I think the catching Pokemon aspect of the game is by far the best and most fleshed out part of the entire game. And let me explain why. One of the things that I know a lot of people were worried about is they didn't want to move away from the battling a Pokemon and catching a Pokemon during a Pokemon battle thing. And I can understand that, actually, because just running around and throwing Pokeballs, that can get really tiresome after a little while, but rest assured, you can still do the classic catch a Pokemon during a Pokemon battle thing. Um, putting Pokemon to sleep or paralyzing them still affects their catch rate, so sometimes it's actually best to go into a battle with a Pokemon that you want to catch and uh, lower its HP a little bit to increase your chances of catching it. There are some Pokemon that are very difficult to catch if you don't go into a battle with them. You see, there are two main types of Pokemon in this game. The Fight Pokemon and the Flight Pokemon. Fight Pokemon, if they see you, will turn on you, get really aggressive, and start attacking you, in which case you yourself have those two options as well. You can either go into Fight Mode, bring out a Pokemon, and try to beat them in a battle so that you can catch them, or just straight out beat them all together. Or you can sort of dodge around the Pokemon's attacks and try to get away from them. Yes, that's right. 
in case you haven't noticed already, uh, you yourself are actually kind of a Pokemon in this game. Because if a Pokemon notices you and they don't want you to be there, they will start attacking you, in which case you yourself have ways to defend yourself. You can actually dodge roll out of the way, and there are some items that you can use during a battle that don't involve your Pokemon being out. This is really neat in theory, but they went a little bit too casual with the way that Pokemon battling actually works without a Pokemon. You can take about three or four hits from any Pokemon before you yourself faint and have to go back to the beginning of the area. And there's not a whole lot you can do outside of dodge rolling around a Pokemon or using an item to escape. It would have been nice if they had had something like uh, treats or something you could throw to the Pokemon to make them start to like you again. But once a Pokemon sees you, it's very difficult to get them off of your case. There are a few items in the game, some berries and stuff that you can use to quell them a little bit or to get their attention or to distract them so that you can catch them a little bit more easily. But for the most part, it's either throw a Pokemon out to battle them, throw a Pokeball while they're not paying attention to try and catch them while avoiding a battle, or run past them while dodge rolling their attacks. I want to clarify though that all of these things are fairly fun. It's not the worst thing in the world when you have to dodge around Pokemon attacks. It's just a little bit easy because the attacks for the most part are very slow and the Pokemon do telegraph their attacks. So the second kind of Pokemon that you'll find in this game are the flight Pokemon. And these Pokemon will basically run from you and try to dodge your Pokeball throws when they see you coming. So these are not Pokemon that you necessarily ever have to fight. You can choose to fight them if you wish. Um, again, you can do this to sort of weaken them to try and make their catch rate go up a little bit. Or you can just fight against them and try to beat them in battles to collect some experience points. But you also have the option of just throwing Pokeballs at them until you catch them. I actually kind of prefer these types of Pokemon because it's a lot of fun to try and aim your Pokeball to get the best throw possible. Like when you predict where a Pokemon is going to jump to next and you catch it right on the head, oh, it feels so good. It's actually super fun. In fact, in general, the Pokeball throwing physics are really good all around. You have different types of Pokeballs that you can throw. Some of them are heavier, so they don't go as far, but uh, if you manage to throw them at a Pokemon that are closer range, then they increase your catch rate. Some of them fly super duper far, so you can sort of sniper scope a Pokemon from halfway across the map. And then, of course, you have your regular Pokeballs, Great Balls, and Ultra Balls that just fly regularly and increase your catch rate. But the fact that you can switch it up and actually use different types of Pokeballs is really cool. The only thing that I didn't like so much about this system of using different Pokeballs is I wish that there were different variations of the Heavy Ball and the uh, Sky Ball or whatever it's called, the one that flies really far. Like, they're really nice touches to the game, but I wish that there were, uh, like, great heavy balls and ultra heavy balls, for example. That would have given you a little bit more use out of them. Because once you unlock ultra balls, you kind of really have the same catch rate regardless of what kind of Pokeball you're using. So you kind of stop using heavy balls altogether. And you don't really need the ones that go really far because they'll start to sort of flaw off when it comes to Pokemon catch rates. I guess while we're on the topic of different Pokeballs, we might as well talk about one of the other new things that have been added, and that is the crafting system. Yes, crafting has come to Pokemon, ladies and gentlemen, and believe it or not, it's actually pretty darn nice. You can craft anywhere you want, and you can make your own Pokeballs, your own potions. Overall, it actually adds a lot to the game, because you don't have to go back and heal up every single time your Pokemon are injured. You can actually craft your own healing items, and you can craft your own Pokeballs so you don't have to keep running back and buying more Pokeballs while you're out on the field. The Pokedex in this game is another one of the absolute best additions to the formula. It is so good. Basically, each Pokedex entry doesn't just have a small description of the Pokemon like before. Now, each one actually has slots for certain achievements when looking for certain types of Pokemon. So, for example, uh, one of them could, say, catch 25 of this Pokemon. One of them could say beat 15 of this Pokemon in a battle. You could also have some that say like see this Pokemon use this move a certain amount of times 
and some of them are even tied into side quests where you have to complete a side quest in order to complete the Pokedex entry for that Pokemon. This is by far the best addition to the game. It is essentially like having an achievement system within the Pokemon game itself, and this more than fulfills my wish of just being able to go out and screw around for a few hours, not focusing on main story or uh, anything related to gym badges or any of that stuff. I can just go out into a field, pick some Pokemon, and just try to get their Pokedex entries filled up, and it is a ton of fun. Now, I will say that it is mandatory that you do some of these uh, Pokedex entry filling quests because uh, at some point in the game, your progress will actually be gated if you haven't completed a certain amount of entries in your Pokedex. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. For somebody like me who really wanted that type of content, I thought it was amazing. But if you're somebody who doesn't really want to do that, or if you think the idea of like catching 25 Pokemon, for example, is a lot of grinds to do when you just don't feel like doing it, you're not going to like this system quite as much because you will have to do some form of that in order to progress the game. This system actually brings me back to one of my personal favorite Pokemon games in the entire franchise, that being Black 2 and White 2. Now, I know a lot of people skipped Black 2 and White 2, and if you did, I completely understand, but it was one of the best games in the entire series, and let me explain why. There were two vital things that Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 brought to the table that I feel should have stayed in the series permanently. The first were achievement medals. They were essentially achievements that you got from doing certain things in the game. Um, catching a certain amount of Pokemon, uh, evolving a certain amount of Pokemon, trading a certain amount of times, winning a certain amount of battles. All of these things that you did in the game that were already fun to begin with uh, were made even better by the fact that you actually had achievements that you could collect for doing these things in-game. There is a reason that Microsoft and Sony have an achievement system. Uh, Nintendo. You, you need to sort of get with the times a little bit here and get one for the Nintendo Switch. But in the meantime, having a small system like this within the game itself, where you can just go out and get a little bit of extra playtime out of your game by going after these achievements is very, very nice. And the fact that we can do that now in Pokemon Arceus is just even better. In fact, I would say that this is probably the perfect version of this system, and I wouldn't change a thing about it. The second vital thing that Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 brought in was if you opened up your Pokedex while in a new area, it would actually tell you how many new Pokemon species were in that area that you haven't caught yet. So if you were in an area and you saw like two empty spaces in your Pokedex, then you could actually take a second to stop, hunt around for those extra Pokemon, and it was a blast, especially for somebody like me who finds the catching and raising Pokemon aspect of Pokemon to be the most fun part of the game. If the grind is starting to get to you outside, there is a new mechanic called Space-Time Distortions, and this is actually how you'll be catching your shiny Pokemon in the game. Uh, there is absolutely no Pokemon breeding whatsoever in this game, and that is something that we will get to in a second here. Uh, but basically, um, there are special areas that will open up on the map. This entire game is about sort of time and space distortions. So you can find a distortion, and you can find super powerful Pokemon within, and you can sometimes find shiny Pokemon as well. I wouldn't say that this added a ton to the game because there are a lot of Pokemon that will be just 30, 40, 50 levels above you and you just won't be able to do anything with. So there's something that kind of switches up the gameplay a little bit if you're somebody who's just out there grinding achievements. And if you want to go hunting for them, you are more than welcome to. It's just a nice little touch. If I do have one major complaint about uh, going out and catching Pokemon, though, it's the lack of item space. So you have very, very limited inventory in this game. And when I say limited inventory, I don't mean you're going to go out there and like every 30 minutes you're going to have to come back and drop off some of your items because your items are full. I mean, every 5 to 10 minutes, you will completely fill up on inventory space. This is because catching Pokemon will also give you some kind of item as well as finding items on the ground and doing small events to get more items. That is one thing that I definitely wish they had loosened up a little bit on. You only have one page of inventory space, so you have to constantly stop to either drop off your items 
or you have to stop and craft things, and even that can continue to fill up your inventory space because there's only so much crafting you can do. Okay, so enough of catching Pokemon, all right? A lot of people are here for the battles, so let's go ahead and talk about the new battle system. The battle system has changed significantly from the type of battles that you're probably used to. Instead of both Pokemon choosing a move at the same time, and then both of the moves uh, happening one after another, depending on the Pokemon speed, you actually have an indicator that will tell you when it is your turn. It's kind of like a more traditional RPG in the same vein as something like Final Fantasy X, where you have a Pokemon go, choose its move, and then its move just comes out, and then depending on its speed, uh, another Pokemon will go. So, for example, if you have a very, very fast Pokemon, you can sometimes be so fast that you get multiple moves in a row before your opponent gets to act. Speaking of which, we have to talk about the other new addition to the battle system, and that being different styles of moves. So every Pokemon move now has two styles that you can put them in. Agile style, which will cut the base power of the move, but um, increase your speed enough that you can sometimes get extra turns. Or you can use strong style, which will increase the base power of the move, but will also decrease your speed to give you less turns. Since you actually have a traditional turn list now, you can go through your moves and actually see if going into Agile Style or Strong Style would be better for a specific type of move. So if you want to use this system to its fullest, what you normally do and what the regular combo is, is to use an Agile Style move to hit your opponent, get some free damage, and then on your next move use a Strong Style move to finish that Pokemon off. This doesn't always work out in your favor. For example, if you have a move with low accuracy, going into strong style will actually lower the accuracy a little bit even more. And if you happen to miss, then chances are your opponent is going to punish you for that mistake. This is a very risk reward system. And personally, I love the crap out of it. It's a lot like Bravely Default, where yes, you can go into uh, taking multiple turns at once, but if that fails, if your opponent happens to live through your little assault of moves, then you are punished for that. Or you can go and play it safe and use a bunch of agile style moves to make sure that you're getting a consistent amount of turns and then potentially double turn your opponent and get a clean knockout. So I feel like this is going to be the most a uh, divisive part of the game. Some people are going to love this battle system because it's so fresh and innovative, and some people are going to hate this battle system because it is abusable and very different from the Pokemon battle system that you're used to. But just give it a chance, especially later on into the game, okay? Because of this system, the game has a lot of encounters that you just could not have in a typical Pokemon game. Uh, the idea that your opponent can sometimes take advantage of this system to make battles a little bit more challenging is a really, really nice idea. In fact, that happens quite frequently. When you are fighting against other people's Pokemon, they will sometimes use Agile and Strong Style to try and get an edge on you in battle. And because of this, the difficulty of this Pokemon game is slightly higher than you'll find in a typical Pokemon game. Another fairly nice change about this battle system is that you can actually switch out your Pokemon's moves at any time. So if your Pokemon ever learns a new move and can't learn it immediately, it'll go into its sort of reserve, and then later on you can go into that Pokemon's moveset and swap them out whenever you feel like it. This is a great change. It is a lot less hassle than going to a move learner trainer guy and having him do it for you because you can just do it whenever you want while you're out on the field. You can also, uh, instead of TMs, go to a move trainer who will actually teach your Pokemon new moves for a certain amount of money, giving your money a little bit of extra value as well. Now, I know I'm sitting here and begging up this battle system like it's the greatest thing in the world, but there are definitely a few drawbacks, and I'm going to talk about those drawbacks now. The Pokemon battle system has been gutted quite a lot to make this new system work, and I feel like it was quite unnecessary. So, here are some examples of some things that you won't be seeing. There are no held items anymore. There are no Pokemon natures. 
And from what I've seen, there aren't any IVs. EVs are still a thing. In fact, there's a way to see the individual EVs of each Pokemon if you just look on their stat screen. But the IVs, I haven't seen any proof at all that they're still in the game. They could be. Don't take my word for it. Please Google whether or not uh, there are IVs in the game before taking my word for it. But from what I've seen, there aren't any IVs. This is another thing that goes hand in hand with the fact that Pokemon breeding has been taken completely out. Normally, I actually wouldn't care too much about these things being lost, but in this case, where this was the first chance the Pokemon battle system has actually stretched its legs and tried something fresh and innovative, I would have liked to have seen those things be implemented into the new battle system anyways. I feel like they would have added a lot of interesting things to combat, and uh, it would have been nice to see them actually adapt. There are other things in the game that have adapted to the new battle system. So, for example, Stealth Rock, there's uh, a new way that Stealth Rock works. Basically, when somebody uses Stealth Rock, it actually hits and deals rock damage, and then every time your Pokémon does an attack after that, it deals a little bit of damage to them. So it actually punishes people who uh, just spam the Agile Styles, because if you go into Agile Style and you keep using moves over and over again, Stealth Rock will keep hitting you for damage rather than its regular effect of switching out Pokemon and dealing damage to a Pokemon on uh, Switch-In. So if you can do something like that for a move like Stealth Rock, I really don't have any kind of reason why they wouldn't just try and adapt the held items and the natures and the IVs to this new system of play. Another thing that really, really sucks about all this stuff being missing is this is the grindiest Pokemon game that has ever ever been released okay like i said before for some of these pokedex entries you have to catch like 25 of a pokemon all the same pokemon all going to your pc box or a uh, field as it is here the pokemon pasture um because this is olden times but catching 25 of a pokemon and then uh there are some other little things you have to do like beat 15 of them in a battle sometimes you have to catch pokemon a certain way like catch a pokemon without being seen for example so you have to uh, catch 25 pokemon and if you don't get all 25 of them without being seen then you have to catch a few more to make up for that and then you have to find 15 more of them and beat them in battles super duper grindy i personally enjoy that kind of thing so it didn't bother me but it does exist, and the more that you take out of the system to make the Pokemon as uh, non-unique as possible, it's just a really bad idea. You know, if these Pokemon had different natures, for example, that would have helped a little bit because you could go searching for Pokemon of a specific nature. Um, if your Pokemon could have held items, then it would be neat to catch Pokemon who have certain held items and get those items from them. It's just a really bad idea to not have something that differentiates these 40 Pokemon that I have to interact with. And uh, I really wish they would have done something about that. You want to know something else? No more trainer battles. I know a lot of people are probably rejoicing about that fact, uh, but when you're out on the field, you won't run into any trainers that want to challenge you to a battle. In fact, trainer battles themselves have essentially been wiped clean from the game. You'll only do trainer battles at specific story points instead of your uh, regular going down a route and then finding people to battle thing. Some people, again, are going to really, really like this change. Personally, I didn't like it as much. It made the worlds feel a little bit more empty because uh, I, I liked the idea of people being out in the world and challenging each other to battles. And I think with this battle system and with how much smarter the AI is, um, it would have been really nice to maybe have a few uh, trainers out there that you could battle optionally. Like, I know a lot of people don't like that you have to face a Pokemon trainer when you uh, run into their path or in their line of view, but I feel like this could have been fixed very easily by just making the Pokemon trainer battles optional. Like, if you could walk up to a trainer who has a Pokemon next to him and maybe just challenge him to a battle that would have been really fun and it also would have been really nice to uh grind your pokemon's levels up a little bit because as it currently stands the only way to level up your pokemon is to go out and grind either through catching pokemon or through battling over and over and over again 
and I feel like adding trainer battles so that you could just battle them, get boosted experience from being in a trainer battle, um, to lower the amount of grind you have to do in an already really grindy game would have been a lot better. Now here's where we get to the absolute most heartbreaking thing about this game. There is no multiplayer to be found in this game whatsoever. And I think that is the thing that's going to hurt this game the absolute most. Because this, out of all of the Pokemon games that I've played recently, okay, I've played every single Pokemon release that's ever been brought out ever, and this is the first time where I've really, really craved that social interaction while I'm playing this Pokemon game. I think this battle system would have created one of the most unique online battling scenes that we've ever seen. I think the addition of agile and strong moves and figuring out when to use them, when not to use them, and uh, little ways of manipulating the speed counter to get extra turns or to take away your opponent's extra turns would have been a blast. But there are no multiplayer battles. No local multiplayer, no online multiplayer. Despite this being my absolute biggest complaint, I've talked to people who have told me that I'm wrong for having that opinion. A lot of people are saying, well, uh, that's not really what this Pokemon game's about. This one's just supposed to be like a mellow single-player experience where you don't really have to worry about online battling. Okay, but listen to me, alright? I am really, really tired of hearing people say that... Uh, if something doesn't necessarily have to be there, that you're not allowed to complain about it not being there. This is where I'm putting my foot down, okay? There is no reason that the option for online battles or the option for local multiplayer battles could not have been in this game. The game is all about time and space distortions. <laughs> it makes no sense that they couldn't have implemented some way for two trainers to face each other and battle. It would have been so much fun for them to put some kind of online battling thing here. And I know some people probably think that the online battle system wouldn't have worked because there are just so many new mechanics to the game that could potentially break the way that online multiplayer works. But that's for us in the community to sort out, all right? We've already done it for regular Pokemon. There are already broken Pokemon out in the game, and we found a way to police that in our own community, okay? It's called Smog on Tears. You just put anything that's too broken in the Uber tier, and then you continue playing with anything that isn't super broken. I really don't think it was Nintendo's place to completely take that away from us for this release. I definitely 100% think that they should have found some way to implement some type of multiplayer in this game. And even if it's not battling, okay, let's say that they didn't want online battling to be a thing, why can't I, Animal Crossing style, go into somebody else's world and just run around and catch Pokemon with them? That would have been fun too, <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not asking for the world here, but going into somebody else's world and then running around and catching Pokemon alongside them, that would have been super duper fun. Uh, we could even have little competitions with each other, both sneak up on a Pokemon and see which one of us could uh, get the Pokeball out there and catch the Pokemon first. I don't, I don't understand why things like this are just accepted to be missing from this game. So just to get it out of the way real quick, um, the main story is it kind of sucks a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm just going to get this out of the way as quickly as possible because I know nobody actually cares about the Pokemon stories. Um, personally, I think that the stories in Pokemon games aren't necessarily that bad. A lot of people hate uh, N and the Pokemon Black and White story. I disagree. I thought it was pretty good. A lot of people hate the um, AZ and Flabebe or whatever it's called Pokemon story in Pokemon X and Y. Again, I disagree. I think it's pretty good. I think Pokemon can have a fairly engaging story when it wants to. It didn't do that here. It's basically split into sections where you show up in this town and uh, you're invited to join something called the Galaxy Team, which is a little bit of a switch on regular traditional Pokemon games because you're actually joining what would normally be the bad guy team in a regular Pokemon game. And uh, you go out on these mini adventures to find these uh, Pokemon and do stuff with them. Again, I'm trying not to spoil too much. 
but basically the game is split into five different chapters and each chapter has you going out and doing something special with a Pokemon and following a sort of contained story about that Pokemon. It's not the worst thing in the world, but that's not really a high bar to pass. It's, it's so boring. Um, each of the little contained stories are so safe and predictable that they're really not that much fun to follow. I remember back in the day playing Dragon Quest IX. That kind of had the same idea where you did these little mini contained stories, but they all had a unique twist on the formula, or uh, there was always some kind of neat little mechanic that would get introduced that would spice up the gameplay a little bit. None of that here. Um, it is just the most boring thing in the world. You're not going to be out catching... Uh, you're not going to be out getting badges. You're not going to be looking for the Elite Four. The entire game is centered around these five little mini chapters that you do. And then when you're done, you can do some more side content and your game is essentially over. Especially since there's no online multiplayer, but cough, cough, especially since there's no multiplayer. Cough, cough. There are boss battles in this game. They obviously work a lot different than a regular Pokemon game where basically you fight against a big, strong Pokemon. I'm sure all of us have seen the trailer with Cleaver by now. And uh, you take a bag of food and you throw them at the Pokemon until the Pokemon's weakened, and then you can challenge it to a traditional Pokemon battle to try and knock down some of its health. At some point, you will get this Pokemon down low enough that the battle will end, and that's kind of your lot. Now, there are different phases of these battles where the Pokemon, as it gets weaker, will start bringing out uh, bigger and harder to dodge moves, because you will primarily just be dodging around these Pokemon. You won't, um, you won't actually be battling them until you get their health down to a certain point. So until that point comes, it's basically figuring out their attack patterns and dodging their moves, and the lower their health gets, the more moves they will have access to. Personally, I think uh, they're a little bit too easy in the beginning because most Pokemon will only have access to one move and that one move will normally be very, very, very easy to dodge. And then as they get to the last like 25% of their health, that's when they'll actually get some kind of move that is engaging to interact with. Something that you'll have to dodge multiple times or you'll have to be standing in a specific area to not get hit by it. This is when the boss battles get really fun but it's also right at the end of the boss battle. So you go through two minutes of really boring boss battle, and then the last 30 seconds or so are really fun, and you want it to last longer, and it just doesn't. Outside of the main story, of course, you have side content that you can pursue. The side content is a very, very refreshing part of the game. There are basically side quests that you can do, and the side quests not only are fun to do, but add a lot to the lore of the world, because it makes a lot of sense what you're doing in these side quests. Some, poke Some people will want you to go out and catch a certain Pokemon for them. Some people want you to teach Pokemon specific moves. And sometimes you'll even get cute little events like uh, in the beginning of the game. You can do an event very early on where a bunch of Bidoof will actually run into town and start terrorizing people. And you have to figure out a way to get them out of the town. It's actually really adorable. On top of that, there are a ton of side quests to do, so that's definitely something that will keep you preoccupied. And as I stated before, you will have to do some form of side content in order to progress in the story, because you have ranks in this game, and until you hit a certain rank, the game will actually block you from going to the next part of the story. So the best way to do this, of course, is to go out collect as many side quests as you can, and then get those side quests done, because it will cut down a lot on the grinding you'll have to do while out on the overworld, and uh, some of the story beats are actually pretty funny. All right, so I've been talking for quite a while now. I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping it up. Uh, I've just got a couple of really quick lightning round bullet points to get through. There are small gathering points on the map, and that was a really cool idea, but it wasn't implemented the best because basically every kind of Pokemon can gather every type of thing on the overworld. So for example, if you see a mining spot, you don't need a rock or a steel or a ground type Pokemon to get that uh, item. You can really just summon any Pokemon you want. It's fine. It doesn't break the game, obviously, but 
I do wish that maybe certain types of items could only be gotten by certain types of Pokemon. Maybe grass Pokemon could get things out of trees, and ground and rock type Pokemon could mine things for ore, and uh, maybe you even had things like flying type Pokemon could get things out of the air. I think that would have added a lot to the overall experience. You can actually throw Pokeballs while riding around on Pokemon in this game. Uh, it's very, very finicky. It does not work very well because your trainer actually won't throw a Pokeball until like half a second after you aimed it. And it throws off your aim a lot. It's actually very frustrating to try and use uh, the riding on Pokemon mechanic to catch Pokemon, even though some Pokemon while you're riding on them will let you go into slow motion and you sort of bullet time like you can in Breath of the Wild when you're aiming an arrow, but this time it's with Pokeballs and it doesn't work anywhere nearly as well. I've already seen some people complaining about the new Pokemon designs. I'm, I'm just completely numb to all of the people who complain about the Pokemon designs in Pokemon games, completely ignoring any bad Pokemon that have ever come out in their favorites set. Um, there are still people who think the first 150 Pokemon are all masterpieces when one of them is literally a pile of purple sludge and its evolution is a bigger pile of purple sludge. People out here complaining about ice cream cones and sets of keys when they literally have Pokemon that are just as awful in their era too, okay? I grew up with Red and Blue. I understand having nostalgia for the games, but don't pretend like modern day Pokemon are where they ran out of ideas and they threw in some crappy Pokemon. If you want to nitpick some Pokemon designs, you can find super awful Pokemon designs in every single Pokemon game, including Red and Blue. It's not sacred just because it's the one you grew up with. So this is going to be completely subjective. Some of the new Pokemon look really good in my opinion. Some of the new Pokemon look really bad in my opinion. As for a rating, do I like the game? Yes, absolutely I like this game. Did it exceed my expectations and give me a memorable experience? Yes, I can safely say it did. Does it stand as one of the best games in its genres? Would I recommend this to anybody who likes Pokemon-style games? Absolutely, I think it's one of the freshest and most unique takes on the Pokemon formula that we've seen since the X and Y days. Do I think the game is a masterpiece that can be enjoyed by just about anybody, regardless of their regular tastes? Um, no. I actually think that's where I take it a step too far. As much as I personally love this game, and I do think this is the best, most well-made Pokemon game that we have gotten in literally years, I do think that they had to gut a little bit too much that I love about Pokemon out of the game, to make it as good as it is. I really, really, really wish they had tried to implement some kind of multiplayer. I think that lack of multiplayer really, really hurt the experience. Um, I miss the held items and natures. I would have loved to have seen how they implemented that into the game. The lack of actual open world where it's just set up in levels like in Sword and Shield where you had the little areas between towns, I think that was a huge disappointment. Um, the lack of inventory space also kind of sucks. The fact that the story sucks uh, really kind of hurts me personally because I think Pokemon can have a good story sometimes. No trainer battles makes the world feel really empty. It's just missing a lot. Despite all of the great things that I have to say about this Pokemon game, I think the easiest thing that I can say about it that sums up my feelings is it's just missing a lot. It missed out on greatness by just a hair. Now with that being said, despite this game being a 7 out of 10, if a mainline Pokemon game comes out in the future that has all of the things that I loved about this game in it, I think that might be the first Pokemon game in history that has a shot at being a 9 or a 10 out of 10. But seeing as how a lot of these features have been missing since Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, I'm guessing that Nintendo's probably going to do the thing that they always do, and they're going to rip all of the great ideas right back out of this game for the future mainline releases, which, it's a shame, but it's probably what's going to happen. Nintendo is all about uh, experimenting with something great, hitting gold, and then throwing the gold in the trash. 
So if you've lasted this long, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you also enjoy your time with Pokemon Arceus. I hope I was able to persuade you to at least give it a try. If you want to prove to me that you made it to the end of the video, why don't you go there in the comment section and tell me what your favorite Kisuian form Pokemon is. Personally, I am rather fond of Zoroark, but if you have a different favorite, please let me know. And I will see you guys next time.